wow, you live long enough and look what happens. <laughs> a, um, it is so, so nice to be here and to see all of you here today. A Chinese philosopher once said, hope cannot be said to exist, nor can it be said not to exist. It is like the roads across this earth. For actually, there were no roads to begin with. But when many people pass one way, a road is made. I am honored, so honored to be with so many of you, my colleagues, my mentors, who have been walking and forging these paths prior to and since Beijing. The Beijing conference was an organizing moment. It galvanized us to come together in a new way. It made US women finally a part of a larger global movement. It grew the US human rights movement from four organizations to more than 400. And many of those organizations are led by women of color. And it allowed for the passage of CEDAW three years later, right here in San Francisco. It grew a women's international philanthropic movement, and it allowed for indigenous women addressing how the environment had been impacting their lives to be heard, preceding Al Gore, the president, and the pope on climate change. <laughs> the concept of girls was lifted to a different level at the Beijing Platform for Action, and the conversations there helped to spark the succeeding conference, United Nations Conference Against Racism, Sexism, and Homophobia, where lesbians were finally recognized. And Beijing galvanized Kawa, without which we wouldn't be here today. Now personally, it was in Beijing where I first heard the concept of microfinance. Not because it was the trendy thing that venture capitalists were getting involved in, nor even that it was Mohammed Yunus who would be receiving a Nobel Peace Prize for his work alleviating poverty. But it was really the work of, surprise, a woman, Ella Bhatt, who was doing this work in India through an organization named Sewa, providing small little bits of capital so that a woman could own a cow or have a stall in a marketplace. And it was done to provide these women with a shred of hope, a sense of dignity, and to build community. For these women were not merely considered worth less than men, but because they were considered worthless. Now, we understand worth less here in our country because we know that women continue to earn a mere 80 cents to every dollar of that earned by a man, and that's on a good day. Or that the US women's soccer team earned $2 million for winning the Women's World Cup and bringing that home, while the men's team earned $9 million for losing in the first round. <laughs> so, keeping Ella Somewhere in the recesses of my brain, 13 years later, some of us work slowly, um, I founded Feed the Hunger Foundation. Not as a profit-making venture per se, but as a means to provide an opportunity to allow those who are considered worth less to become a part of building their own communities. And so that together, we could create sustainable development. So, to Wynn, to Kawa, to Marilyn, to all of you here, thank you for this award and for allowing me to walk the path for these last few decades with you. <laughs>